Hi, while we're off and have a lot of time to think, I wanted to share with you um, some multiplication strategies that are very common and kind of why they work and kind of where they originated from and how we go from the array to the area model to the standard algorithm, which most adults are used to doing um, the standard algorithm, and we still teach our students how to do the standard algorithm um, after a long period of time of practicing with arrays and practicing with area models, and then also practicing with other efficient strategies as well. There's all kinds of strategies for multiplication out there. Um, doubling and having is one, the over strategy is another. Um, there's all kinds of strategies you can use, but these are some of the foundations to um, multiplication and building towards the standard algorithm, which is efficient for um, larger numbers and um, has a place and a purpose. But we cannot forget where the multiplication started from, and we cannot forget that sometimes there's more efficient ways to solve problems and actually takes less steps than the standard algorithm. So I want to start very basic and talk about the array, where kind of multiplication originates. In third grade, and even uh, late second grade, students start to learn about arrays. And so arrays are in the shape of a rectangle, as you can see. And I have the problem three times six written here. And so I have three rows and six um, dots in each row, which represents the six columns. So if you take a look at that, it looks very similar to the area model. Um, the area model is comes from the, the uh, geometry shape, a rectangle, and so that's why we call it the area model. Um, but anyway, with the array um, for 3 times 6, you see that all the rows have an equal amount, and that's what multiplication is. When you have a certain number of equal groups is what I tell my students. So I have three groups, and in each group there are six dots. Um, so one of the cool things about multiplication is that you can actually break um, the factors, three and six apart, to make it um, easier to chunk and kind of put together and see how much there is in all. Um, yes, it is great to know your basic facts, like three times six, but as you're learning and building as a young student, um, you're not just going to have that memorized just like that. And so you'll need strategies to... Um, help solve that instead of counting one by one. We want to get students away from counting one by one or skip counting by three. We want them to start to chunk larger numbers together so that they can quickly um, get those facts in their mind and quickly solve problems and um, just be more efficient. So um, yes, we could go through and skip count by threes or skip count by twos or, or count one by one, but if we didn't know this fact already, there's other ways we can chunk. And that's known as the distributive property of multiplication, which means that you can break apart a factor like 6 into smaller chunks of add-ins. So 3 times 6 is really the same as 3 times the sum of 3 plus 3. And what does that look like in this model here? Basically, I left 3 rows alone, but I chunked 3 columns together so that I have 3 plus 3. Now, 3 times 3 might be an easier thing for kids to see, and they see, oh, that's 9. Well, then they can chunk 9 and 9 together and say, hey, I have 18 in all. So that's using the distributive property of multiplication to kind of um, chunk things into smaller pieces, but still allow you to be more efficient with your time and counting how many dots there are in all. So kids would see 3 times 3 is 9, and 3 times 3 is 9 again, and then add them together. So basically we end up with 3 times 3 plus 3 times 3. And that gives us a total of 18 altogether. Now the cool thing about multiplication is this is not the only way to chunk numbers. You can choose to chunk numbers um, that's most efficient for you. So, like, if you are really awesome with your five facts, let me erase this row right here. It's really cool. We're going to leave the array alone because there's still 18 there. 3 times 6 is 18 no matter what you say or do. That is the value of 3 times 6. 
but we could chunk this in a different way. Instead of saying 3 plus 3 across the top here, we could say we're going to chunk these five together, these five columns, and we're going to leave this one chunk by itself. And so we have 5 plus 1, that's still 6 across the top, but if a child is really good with their fast facts, they can skip count by fives very quickly, 5, 10, 15. And then say, oh, there's 15 dots in here and 3, and 15 plus 3 makes the 18. So we just broke apart the 6 again, so we have 3 times 5 plus 1. And that just comes out to be 3 times 5 plus the sum, or plus the product of 3 times 1. So we end up with 15 plus 3, which is still 18. So that's the cool thing about multiplication and where we start in second and third grade about uh, finding multiplication facts. And with our new program, Bridges, it really emphasizes using the distributive property um, for finding your basic facts. So I really like that about this new program that we're doing, and hopefully we can build a better foundation with the students who are coming in and, and moving up. Um, but how do we go from that to larger numbers like 48 times 23? Well, we can apply the same kind of property, the distributive property, to help us solve larger problems um, that involve like two-digit numbers or three-digit numbers or four-digit numbers, okay? So this is called the area model, and that's because we know that um, a rectangle, when we find the area of a rectangle, we are finding the length times the width. So it kind of follows the same pattern of the multiplication array. So that's why we use the area model very heavily in third, fourth, and fifth grades um, to do multiplication, especially with larger digits. So as you can see, 48 times 23, I broke it into kind of expanded form. Now, um, I broke 48 into 40 plus 8 and 23 into 20 plus 3. This is not the only way to break up those numbers. Um, you could break up 20 into four groups of five if you wanted to. Five plus five plus five plus five plus five plus three. I think that was four fives. Um, but you could break it up into smaller chunks. However, kids in fourth and fifth grade also start to um, learn about um, multiplying by multiples of 10. And we call these powers of 10 because we know that anytime you multiply by 10, all the digits shift to the left one place. And so once they start to learn that pattern, if they know their basic facts like 3 times 6, then they can easily multiply things like 3 times 60 by putting a 0 on the end because they understand that when you multiply by 10, all the digits shift to the, to the left. And so they learn about that property and, and those things um, in 4th and 5th grade. So at this point, then, you would see them break apart this area model into four chunks. Of course, this chunk is supposed to be larger because we're we'll multiplying 20 times 40, which are two powers of 10. So this is like two times 10, and this is like four times 10. So when we multiply all those together, we get something that looks like this, 20 times 40. Or if we really want to break it down and think about it, that's the same as two times 10 times four times 10 which is, if you know your basic facts, 2 times 4 is 8. But then we're also multiplying by 2 powers of 10. That means there are two zeros that get stuck on the end because we really multiplied that whole thing out by 100 when it was all said and done. So 20 times 40 is the 800. And then, then we can start moving over here, 20 times 8. Excuse me, i got to get my kids. All right, I'm back. Sorry, my kids are getting out of hand, but that's okay. That happens. They're upstairs playing now for a little bit. Um, but anyway, um, next we can multiply the 20 times the 8, okay? Because it's important that we are multiplying each digit from one factor by the other digits and the other factors. Um, so 20 times 8, if we know that 2 times 8 is 16, And then 20 has one power of 10 in it, we're going to stick a zero on the end. So 8 groups of 20 is 160. The next 
part that we can multiply is the 3 times the 40. So 3 times 4, 10. That's really what we're going, what's going on here. And 3 times 4, 10 is 12, 10. And if you skip count by 10, 12 times, you'll get 120. We have 120 there. And then, last but not least, we have the little old minus 3 times 8 ones. There's no powers of 10. It's just the basic fact 3 times 8, which is 24. And so then what do you do with all of these what we call partial products? Just like in the array model down here, okay, you're going to add those partial products together, okay? So we have 800 plus 160 plus 120. I'm going to do that down here real quick. 160, 120, and 24. And we end up having 6, 2, and 2 tens. That's 10 tens, which is 100. So we group the 100, 8, 9, 10, 11 hundreds. The 1,104 is our total, okay? So you'll see lots of fourth and fifth graders use that model, and it's efficient, honestly. Um, if they're really good with this strategy, um, I don't worry so much if they don't perfect the standard algorithm by the time they leave fifth grade, um, because it's not, it's, I think it has a place and a purpose, but if they understand the foundation, that's where we, we want them to be, and they'll have time to practice the standard algorithm some more, and of course, I tell them to think about the numbers before they jump in so they have even a more efficient strategy than the area model. So definitely try to use those, especially if they have good numbers in. Um, so how does this translate to the standard algorithm? It's very cool. I actually really love how it connects so well to it. So um, if you were doing the standard algorithm at home, um, you would always start with we always start with the lowest place value, so the ones times the one, okay? Well, where is that in this area model? It's actually right here. It's the three times eight is 24. So where do you place those digits? Well, we leave four, one, five, and we regroup those two tens, okay? So those are two tens that we're regrouping, okay? Now here's the cool part. The next thing we're going to do is the three times the four tens. The three times the four tens, the three times 40. The three times four tens is 12 tens. But we have those two other tens to add to it. Okay, so 12 plus two is 14. So I'm gonna write 14 tens. And if you're really thinking about that language, 14 tens, what does that really mean? Well, it really means 140. So that's why I put the one in the hundredth place and the four in the tenth place. That represents those 14 tens. Now, here is the coolest thing of all, in my opinion. Where is that 144 found in this area model? I'll give you a second to look for it. If you haven't found it, it's actually the combination of this down here. Because what you guys just did, or what you just watched me do, was 48 times 3. 48 times 3. So this bottom part of the area model is actually these two put together within the first um, partial product of the algorithm. So these two right here, even these two right here, together make that. I think it is so cool how that works out. Okay, so then what about the next part? We know using the standard algorithm, the next step is the next come down and put your place over zero, right? You just automatically put a zero. But why? I ask my students, why do we put that place over zero? Well, think about what you're about to multiply. You're about to multiply 48 times the two, but that is not a two. That is a two in the tens place, so it's actually 20. And after we learn about patterns of multiplying by 10 in fourth and fifth grade, we know that anytime you multiply by 10, and it's a whole number, there's a zero that goes in the ones place because all the digits shift to the, to the left one place. So we have that place over zero there. And so next, we think about what's two tens times eight. Two tens times eight is 16 tens. Well, we've already got that zero there for 160. Okay, two times eight is 16. So we have this, here's the tricky part, the 16 
tens, so we've got the six tens and the zero tens, where does that one go? This is the most confusing part for kids. It still goes above the four and the two in the tens place, even though it means 100. Uh, 160 from here is right here at this point in the algorithm. So that is probably one of the trickiest things of all because they have to think of that as like 100. And the reason why is because we're about to multiply two tens times four tens. And when you multiply 10 times 10, you get that 100. And we're going to be adding that other 100 to it. So last but not least, what's 2 times 8? Or 2 times 4 is 8, but those are 8 hundredths. But then we have to add one more hundred to it, so we get 9 hundredths. So 4 times 2 is 8, plus 1 is 9, but the 9 is in the hundredths place because we're multiplying 20 times 40 is 800, but we're adding in that 100 from the previous thing that we multiplied. So these two partial products are found here. Isn't that so cool? I love it. And the last thing, of course, is still like you do with the area model down here or the array model, you still have to add those partial products. Believe it or not, in the standard algorithm, you still have partial products, just like in the area model. Just have more in the area model than in the standard algorithm. So at the very end, you add them together. And you have 9, 10, 11, and we got the same amount as we did down here. And that is the coolest thing in the world. I love multiplication. I love how it can build from something so basic and we can use those same properties all the way through um, different strategies and models. So um, that's why we stress the area model so much. That's why you see it used so much in multiplication and even division because division is the opposite of multiplication. We just don't know one of the factors, but we know what's in here. And so that's why you also see that area model used a lot for um, division. So I hope that helps you understand a little bit about where the area model comes from, from the arrays, and how the standard algorithm is actually a derivative of the area model. It's just condensing the steps. Um, and so I think students do pretty well with two digit times two digit. For the most part, they still get a little uh, tripped up, but it's, it's brand new to them. I mean, they have to have time to develop that and really think about all those parts. So I hope that this, um, this lesson, I guess, was a little bit useful for parents and for students alike.